How's it going YouTube? Dalton here. In this video, we're going to talk about whether you should learn iOS development or Android development. Now, I'm working as both. I'm doing freelancer iOS development and I'm doing a little bit of Android at my job. So I thought I'd just chime in here and tell you a little bit about the differences between the two and which one you should learn, right? So I'm going to talk about this from like a beginner kind of perspective. So if you have any like programming experience, your, your experience may differ in this area. So for example, Android, if you're doing Kotlin, for example, is going to be based on, you know, Java. So if you study Java in school, then obviously you already have that background and that basis of, you know, Java. So uh, as a result, Android's probably going to be easier for you, right? And then if you have experience with C-based languages, you know, Swift is based on Objective-C. It's basically the Objective-C 2.0. So if you come from the C-based backgrounds, whether it's like C hash, C++, C regular C, or of course Objective-C, then obviously you're going to find iOS development to be a lot easier, right? So we're not going to talk about React Native or Flutter in this video or Dart. We're going to save that for a different video, but we're going to just talk about the native platforms in this video. So let's get into it. So what is the difference between the two? Well, the difference between the two is just the way that they're set up, right? So what you need to think about is you need to think about how the iPhone versus the Android is actually set up. So an iPhone is very, very smooth, and there's one way to do it, the Apple way that you have to do it. Whereas Android, you have infinite customization. You have all these different types of ways to do it. You know, you have so many different types of ways to organize your home screen. You know, you can add bootloaders and stuff like that. You can really get deep into the hardware into, with Android development as a user, not as a developer, as opposed to iOS, which is a lot more locked down, and you have to do it the Apple way. So what I mean by the Apple way is let's just say that you wanted to add widgets to the screen. When you add widgets to the screen, it usually has to go from top left down to bottom right, right? You have to do it the Apple way. But for an Android, you know, you can put it wherever you want in the screen. And that's kind of how I feel is development in both Android and iOS. So in Android, there's an infinite amount of ways to actually execute something. So for example, parsing a JSON, as opposed to the iOS way, where there's only one or two ways to actually parse a JSON, for example. So let's take that example and let's drill deeper into it. So in Android, there are so many ways to parse a JSON, right? You can use KTOR, you can use, you know, JSON, uh, you, uh, I forgot what it was called, but it's like JSON URL or something like that. I prefer to use KTOR. I just find it easier, but that's just a quick example on, and then I believe there's like, two or three other ways other than uh, KTOR in order to parse a JSON. You move over to the iOS side and there's only really one or two ways to actually do it. You set up your struct, you conform it to either decodable or codable, then you make your function. It can either be an asynchronous function or you can have a completion handler. You convert a string to a URL, launch a URL session, have a do, try clause, use your JSON decoder with your struct, and that's basically the way that you do it in Swift, right? Whereas in Android, there's just so many more options, and if you're a beginner, you can easily get confused if you haven't had any experience in the coding realm, right? So if this is your first language, then Android might not be the best for you. Another thing I've noticed is there's a lot of more technical depth when it comes to Android and a lot of the packages that they tend to use, right? So, you know, you might use a package one day and then the next day it's been, it's been deprecated and you can no longer use it. Then you have to refactor the code, right? Now, there are a little bit of this in iOS, but they do a lot better job of slow, slowly deprecating a lot of the functionality through time, right? So, for example, you know, you have animations in Swift, for example. Animations was deprecated in iOS 15.0, and 
you know, but you can still use animation, right? They don't force you to use it because it's completely been phased out. They just tell you that it's been deprecated, right? So another thing that I found personally is just coding in Swift. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased because I've coded in Swift longer than I've coded in Android, but I just find it a lot more, a lot more clean when it comes to the code base, right? Because when you're working with Android, yes, you can minimize it, but there's a lot more packages that you have to import in, to your main activity in order to use all the functions that you have through it. Whereas in iOS, you just have to add the packages to your Xcode project and then use import whatever the module is. And I find that to be a much cleaner implementation. Whereas you go on the Android side, you had to add it to your dependencies, you know, you had to add it to your build gradle, and then you have to add it to your main activity. These are three potential areas that you can miss something, get confused, and forget, and then your code breaks or it won't compile, or it crashes at runtime, and then you're busy debugging it when you realize that you forgot to add it in your dependency, for example. And you know, this is just more, more resistance, especially for new developers in order for them to get frustrated, right? So my honest opinion, if you really want to learn native uh, native development, you know, and you haven't had any experience, I do find that uh, Swift to be a lot cleaner, iOS, Xcode, that kind of thing, right? But again, like I said earlier in the video, if you have experience in Java, then Kotlin's going to be a breeze because Java is very, very similar to it, but more condensed. At, if you come from a C background like I did, you know, I learned C in school, then I definitely do recommend that you brush up on Swift. So to conclude this video, there really is no right answer. There it really is no completely right way. But take all this advice and make sure you make a best decision for yourself. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Click that subscribe button as it really helps support the channel and lets me know that you enjoy content like this. And of course, leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you thought about it, a lot about this video. Let me know if you want any more topics. And without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.